that what we believe about who we are ultimately is what drives our habits. And the most effective way to not backslide is to change who we believe that we are. Because you can, for a little while, keep up the energy to do a habit that's out of character with, with who you really think you are, but life is gonna encroach in and eventually we're gonna find ourselves like, oh yeah, I left my clothes all over the floor again. Because I, I don't really believe that I am a tidy person. And what's cool about this is taking it spiritually, I think opens up a much more holistic, positive direction for it. Because we can ask the question, not who do I want to be? A big part of the Atomic Habits book is what kind of person do I want to be? And then these habits can help us get there. But we don't know who we want to be. I don't. There's been many periods in my life where I wanted to be the best basketball player in the world. I wanted to be the best musician in the world. I wanted to be cooler than everybody else. I, who, who am I to say at any age that I really know what kind of person I should be? And there's plenty of times we can get notions in our heads. Of, it would be really great if I was this. That is not what's great for me and not what's great for everyone. But what is the system in which if we're asking a question it makes life better for everyone. It's when you're asking, who does God want us to be? And if we can apply this powerful method for changing our identity, and we already have the blueprint, we already have God telling us, well, here's the direction you should go. Let's marry those two things together and create some really good life change. So this is Jeremiah 17, verses 7 through 8. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. So that's who we're, what we're meant to do. And what condition, what kind of life does that give us? Don't read ahead. Just kidding. For he shall be, just, just let this sink in. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought nor will cease from yielding fruit so how do i break out of this and i think a way we can do it is through habits and in particular something that's called habit stacking, which is this really sharp tool from the book Atomic Habits. So habit stacking is essentially the principle of rather than try to create something from scratch, you piggyback onto a habit you're already doing to establish a new habit. And in this instance, we're going to piggyback onto the negative habit that I have about worrying in a perfectly good moment about what could go wrong with a new sort of habit. So to explain the term habit stacking, this is from the book Atomic Habits. Habit stacking is a strategy you can use to pair a new habit with a current habit. Can we go to the next slide? Because this is all written out for all of you. The habit stacking formula is, this is really complicated, this is calculus. <clears throat> After I, current habit, I will, new habit. But it works. Because if there's something you're already doing, to tack on a new behavior to that, in my limited experience of trying this out over the past couple of weeks, is a lot easier than trying to start something from scratch. So what... I want to do is give us the opportunity to stack a habit onto our tendency to make regular moments negative. I'm just going to assume that everybody shares my propensity for sometimes not seeing how, uh, how great any given moment is. 
But I was noticing there as I was going to the car, like this, all this worry and all this fear wants to claim this moment as something bad. It wants to say, look, because there's this potential complication coming up and because this thing might be going wrong, right now is bad. But I want to assert that actually right now is not bad. Right now is good. And the habit that I want to introduce for us is that whenever that comes in, whenever you get your negative head weather, little storm front coming in and you start to worry about something or get upset about something or, or even get bored with the moment, the habit, so as soon as I am experiencing something negative in this moment, un, and I'd say something unnecessarily negative in this moment, I'm not going to try to, let's not for now work on when your car really does get a flat tire and being all zen about that. I'm talking about when nothing is going wrong and unnecessary negativity is coming in. So the habit I want to introduce is whenever I feel unnes- unprompted, ooh, that's another good word for it, unprompted negativity in this moment. So that's my first habit. My new habit is to say to myself, this is a great moment. The act comes first. Our will to do it comes after. So we make this decision that we're going to pursue this thing. We keep we doing it and doing it. You're not quite maybe feeling the joy you thought you'd feel in it. That'll come. What we do at the call of the intellect, we eventually do with a will and finally take on as a habit. So finally, it becomes part of who we are. But it's a process, a multi-step process. At that point, it is infused into our inner rational self, so the deeper part of your consciousness. Once it has been infused, we no longer do good from truth, but from good. So it's not because I have to. It becomes, oh, I love doing this. I want to do this. Because we start to feel a certain bliss and a sense, and to sense something of heaven in it. I love that. Like, I can feel some heaven in this thing that I'm doing. This feeling remains with us after death when we're in the the Spirit. And through it, the Lord lifts us into heaven. So you can even be thinking about, look, this is building up this heavenly elevator that I'm going to feel some of in life, but it's going to, it's part of who I am deep down, and it's going to be there. This is what creates this state of life and heart that we call heaven. Heaven.